welcome to the video. My name is Alan. This is Bahal is Awesome. It's a channel all about exploring the awesome places and things to do around this beautiful province of Bahal. About a month ago, I did a video about my new home. We did a house tour and went over some tips for building as a foreigner in the Philippines. Today's gonna be part two where we go over the cost. I know a lot of people have been asking me in the comments and some direct messages wanting to know how much it cost me to build the house. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, why don't we talk about the lot? I bought the lot back in November of 2018 and it's 200 square meters. Back then the price was 3,200 per square meter, which works out to 640,000 pesos for the lot. Back when I bought it, I thought the prices were getting pretty expensive, but now three years later, the price has almost doubled again. So uh, those are the prices in Bahal. Again, this is gonna be different for every single province or town or city that you're wanting to build. So just keep that in mind as we go through the video. Okay, let's talk about the house. So our contractor gave us a range, basically 15,000, 20,000 or 25,000 uh, pesos per square meter. The differences for that had nothing to do with the structure of the house, but everything for like fixtures and tiles and the, the types of doors or lights, um, all those little extras or things around the house that would add up. Uh, you basically are choosing the quality. Uh, what we did is we went sort of somewhere in the middle and paid roughly about 18,000 per square meter. There was a few things that we didn't mind uh, being on the lower end. There was a few things that we really wanted on the higher end. So we sort of met somewhere in the middle. Another thing that we needed to add on top of that price was the drawings for the, the blueprinting of, of the house, uh, as well as like permits for like building permits, occupancy permits and that sort of thing. So the drawings was about 20,000. Uh, permits all in was about 20,000 as well. So if you add our 18,000 per square meter with the 68 uh, square meters of the, the floor plan, you're looking at 1,200,000 pesos for the house. So you bought your lot, you built your house, but that doesn't include a lot of the little extras that also go into it, which is something that I mentioned in part one of the uh, house tour video and, and tips. Uh, so the first thing we need to talk about is utilities. So as you can see from some of the drone shots, there currently isn't many neighbors around us. That meant we had to bring in our own electricity poles, water lines, and all that really added up. So if we want to talk about the electric, we use some line or we use some posts to get most of the way to the house, but we still had to put in uh, a bunch of our own. So the lines and the posts cost us 15,000 pesos. Labor and different permits that we needed was 5,000. We had to pay per outlet. So I'm not sure how it works with other provinces or other electric companies, but you have to pay roughly 200 to 250 pesos per outlet and light fixture. Uh, around the entire property. That's some sort of, I wouldn't call it a deposit, but there's some sort of payment that you have to make for that, uh, as well as an actual deposit with the electric company for 5,000. All in to get the electricity set up, we're looking at 50,000 pesos. And on top of that was the water. So there was two different options. There is the local barangay water, which we did set up. I'm, I'm not gonna be putting it in the costs here, but we set it up and the pressure was way too low. Um, it only ran for about an hour or two per day. It wasn't really the greatest. Uh, so we brought in what we have here is Richley water. It's really great water. It's drinking water uh, direct from the tap. It is, however, quite expensive. And we had to run pipes all the way to the main road, which is nearly a kilometer uh, from the house. So putting in the meter at the main road from the company costs us 7,000 pesos. And then the pipes and labor cost 33,000 for a grand total of 40,000 pesos to get us water. Now, I know that seems a little bit high, but for us, it made a lot of sense. We needed uh, a line that had a lot of pressure to get all the way to the top of our tower. So that way we could have a gravity feed. We didn't have to worry about having a pump. Uh, having a pump so close to the ocean here, uh, corrosion is such a big deal that we'd end up having to replace, repair the pumps all the time. So a little bit more investment now will save us a lot of money in the long run. Plus we can use it as drinking water. We do use a Brita jug just in case, uh, but it is rated to be drinking water straight from the tap, which is pretty great for the Philippines. All right, so let's go through some of the other extras around the house. The first thing is the fence. Uh, the fence goes around the entire property. Um, it's fairly simple, about two or three concrete hollow blocks uh, and then some chain link above that. Basically just to keep out um, other dogs, chickens and cows and, and that sort of thing, not necessarily people. We definitely live in a, a safe neighborhood so we're not really worried about that. Uh, I will get into some security stuff a little bit later. 
But the fence cost us 115,000. Uh, that includes the materials and labor. We also built our, the storage in the back. Uh, that has also a tower at the top where we put our two different tanks. One of them is the tank for our main water and drinking water. The other one is for water collection. So we collect a lot of water, especially during the rainy season here. We use that to water the garden, uh, use for laundry and that sort of thing. The storage tower in both tanks came out to 157,000 pesos. Next is the Kubo. This is definitely a nice to have. It wasn't a needed thing, uh, but we really wanted a place to go hang out in the back. And we really wanted to have a place outside and shaded from the sun. The Kubo cost us 32,000 pesos. For security, we do have security grills on all of the windows around the building. Uh, that cost us 18,000 pesos. That just gives us a little bit of peace of mind. Again, I'm not too worried about uh, security in this area, but it's always good to have. And last but not least, um, landscaping. So we have a concrete walkway all the way around the house and leading to uh, one of the gates. And then also that included leveling of the entire lot. Um, we have our, raised ourselves a little bit so that when it does rain a lot, we don't have to worry about flooding. Uh, and then adding all of the, the gravel to, for where we, where we park the, the vehicles. Okay, so let's review all of the costs. We have our lot, 640,000. Uh, the house was 1.2 million. Plans and permits was 40,000. Uh, electricity, 50,000. Water, 40,000. Fence, 150,000. Uh, the storage area, tower and tanks was 157,000. The Kubo, 32,000. Security grills on, around the windows, 18,000. And the landscaping was 25,000. That brings us up to 2,317,000 pesos for the entire lot. However, that does not include things like air conditioning, beds, kitchen appliances, fans, compost, ladders and tools and barbecues and all the other things that you need when you actually move in. So I would want to factor that into the cost if you're trying to do a budget. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you do want to see part one where we do a house tour, you can check out the video right here. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description below. I hope you have an awesome week. See you next time. Bye.